Grove United Methodist Church. It's good to see everybody here this morning. I'm glad you're here. It's been a, a kind of a rainy week earlier, but it's turned into a beautiful day. And I'm uh, happy to be in, in Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church on this beautiful day with all you folks. Uh, a few announcements this morning uh, on the board. Buzz Barrett is recovering at home. We keep him in our prayers and our, his family in our prayers. Um, Jim Garner, <coughs> former choir director here at Pleasant Grove, uh, passed away yesterday. Um, Elaine will keep Virginia updated. Uh, there are no details as far as arrangements right now, but uh, every, they'll try to to get those for us as soon as they're known. Um, also, Frances Constantine, who is the sister of Everett South and the aunt of Chuck Blackwell, uh, passed away. I don't know the date on that. Okay. She passed away this past week. Friday night, okay, thank you. Um, there are several announcements in the bulletin. Uh, first of all, uh, I know Susie would want me to extend her thanks to everyone who helped out with the teacher's luncheon uh, Friday. It's always something that, that we look forward to, for, to do for them, and that they look forward to, to receive it from us. It's always appreciated by the, by the teachers and the staff. And uh, Susie said the, the, she had plenty of help all three days in preparation and before that even. But uh, said everything went smoothly, the food was good. Uh, <coughs> said it was just very positive. So thanks to all who had a hand in helping with the teacher's luncheon. Uh, the pastor staff team will meet August the 20th at uh, six o'clock in the conference room. That's a couple of weeks away. Uh, remember to bring your used shoes for Aiden. You can bring them through Wednesday, August the 29th. Uh, are there any announcements from the congregation? Are we gonna have a meeting on the 12th? Did you get my email? I'm sorry. More news forthcoming. <laughs> As a reminder, I'd like to mention to everyone this morning, if you have a cell phone or a pager or a tablet or anything that'll make noise, go ahead and silence it or, or turn it off. If you don't know how to silence it, turn it off. Anything electronic, except your hearing aids or hearing devices, don't turn those off. But cell phone, whatever, you know, sometimes you forget, go ahead and turn them off. It'll be appreciated. Uh, that's all I have, I think. Well, welcome, and now we'll have the prelude and bringing in of the light.
Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning giving thanks. We give thanks for the, the many blessings, the many gifts that you bestow upon us. We thank you for the things that we can see, the beautiful skies, the, the rain and the sun, the beautiful state and country that we live in. We also give you thanks for the things we can't see that you provide for us and bless us with. Your love. We can't physically see it, but we feel it, Lord. We know that you love us. You sent your son Jesus to prove that you love us. And you love all of us the same. Whether we're here at Pleasant Grove or whether we're, whether we're on the other side of the world, you love all of us the same. You created each and every one of us. And we praise your name and thank you for that blessing. Lord, help us to find the things that we have in common rather than argue over our differences. Teach us to love one another as you loved us and as you proved to us. Help us, help us show that love. You, you gave us that love not to keep to ourselves and bottle up and collect and save. You gave us that love to share with others. Help us to share it wherever we go. We ask that you be with those who are not with us this morning. Bring them back to us safely. We also ask that you be with those who are suffering from illness, from hardships, anything that is weighing heavy on their shoulders, Lord. We know that you can take it off of them if they just lay it before you. Now bless us as we worship today together and hear your word presented to us in music and in spoken word. In your name we pray, amen. Will you stand as we sing together, Come Thou Almighty King. As you're seated, I invite all of the Sunday school teachers to come forward. Any of those who teach um, adults or children, I invite you to come to the altar rail. Today we're celebrating our Sunday school. We'll um, dedicate our teachers and um, then uh, 
promote our children and that's okay. I think Doris was going to, there she is. All right. So we're recognizing those who teach and those who learn. And by recognizing those who have responded to the opportunity to serve God by teaching Sunday school, we, um, all of those who are called to this vocation certainly need our prayers. I was going to say that the, the ones that teach children might need them more, but sometimes maybe the adult teachers <laughs> might need them as much. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few questions, the Sunday school teachers. Um, you've responded to the call to teach. Will you endeavor to develop your gifts for teaching so to continue to pass on the Christian faith? Uh, will you be faithful to the task, taking seriously the commitments of time and talent? And will you take seriously your role as a learner, studying diligently the scriptures and traditions of the faith? Okay, I invite the congregation to um, respond. We pledge ourselves to pray for you and for the educational ministry of this church. We pledge ourselves to enable, encourage, and love you in this ministry. We pledge ourselves to be learners with you, diligently studying with you the scriptures and traditions of the faith. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have entrusted us with the message of your power, grace, justice, and love. Provide your guidance that we may be teachers and learners together, believing that you are in our midst at all times. We set apart those who would serve in our church school. May they serve you in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who are entrusted to their care. Bless each one gathered before us. Enable them to be channels of your grace. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So I invite you to return to your seats, and we'll ask all the children to come forward for the children's time. That's okay. I'm going to give you a tag that you can put on it. I've, I've got a little tag. All of the children can come to the front. All right. So before we uh, talk about what's starting this week, <laughs> we have something special we want to do, and I'm going to ask Aiden to stand up. Can you come stand up here with me so everybody can see you? Receive the word of God. Learn its stories and study its words. Its stories belong to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to one another, for we are the people of God. So today we're giving Aiden this Bible since he's starting third grade, and um, that's usually the time by which most children can read their Bible on their own. So that's for you to read every day. I think there's a response from the congregation, so let us read that together. We rejoice in this step of your journey with God. We pray God will guide you, your family, and us as you use this holy Bible in your home and in our worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's word. Okay, today we're going to celebrate the growth of our children and youth as they become uh, more mature in faith and in years. And I've got some certificates to hand out to our ones who are always here. So there, there'll be a few kids that I didn't know they were going to be here today. So. <laughs> All right, e uh, Ethan Rogers, Jonah Oldendorf, Sienna's not here, Elias Oldendorf. Aiden Rogers, Blaine Rogers, Chase Hill, and Bella Rose Hill are not here, so uh, we're proud of all of y'all, and uh, we're, we appreciate the parents getting them here to uh, Sunday school every week. So. And uh, there's a response that we'll have, or a prayer from the congregation. Let us pray together. Oh God, God you, you have created, created us as human beings. beings who mature from infancy 
through childhood and adolescence into adulthood. Today we celebrate that growth. We lift up all who move this day into new classes for learning and spiritual growth. Keep each child and youth in your care and keep us ever mindful of the promise we make each time we baptize another in faith, that we will assist them to grow in knowledge, in spiritual practices, and in living the disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so what's starting this week? Where are y'all going to go this week? You're going to middle school? Pleasant Grove Elementary School. Yeah, school's starting. And some of you have your backpacks, don't you? A few of you have your backpacks today with you. So we're going to bless your backpacks. And even if your black pa backpack isn't here with you, I've got a little card that you can put on it that says, this backpack has been blessed because we're blessing um, the tag. So you can take it and put it on your black backpack and know <laughs> that it's blessed. There are too many bees in that, aren't there? <laughs> Okay, so I want to I want to tell you something about your backpack. You have backpacks that will be carried to and from school every day. They contain work that you'll do and work that you're returning to school. There'll be books that are going to be studied and read. There'll be tools like computer computers. Listen to me, calculators. Maybe have you had to get a calculator? No. Okay, notebooks. What else do you put in your backpack? Pencils. Pens, crayons, binders, scissors, glue sticks, all those things. You can't take all those home, but you'll carry them there one day. Okay, so some days those backpacks <laughs> will be filled with things that make it so heavy it's hard to walk. Maybe not for the younger ones, but by the time you get to high school, I've seen some pretty heavy backpacks. Although, you know what, I say that, they all have computers, don't they, now? They just carry the computer back and forth, not the books. Anyway, so today we're presenting the backpacks and our tags for the backpacks so that we can say a prayer for them and know that God's blessing is on you at all times. So let us pray. Gracious God, bless the backpacks and these children and youth who will carry them as they begin yet another year of school. Give them peace when they feel nervous focus when they feel distracted, and energy when they feel tired. Open their minds to all the lessons they will learn both in and outside the classroom. Help them to make friends that build, that build each other up and be friends to those who are in need. Guide them in making good choices as they grow in wisdom and maturity. Be ever present with them in the classroom, on the school bus, on the playground, and at home and may they feel your loving care in all they do. Amen. Amen. So, here, you can take a tag as you go. You want to take one? Then you can go. Oops. Okay, whoops. Maybe you don't want another one? Go to children's church.
gospel lesson comes from the gospel according to Mark. I invite you to stand as we read the gospel. It's um, actually starting with verse 28, verses 28 through 35 of chapter 12. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, Jesus, the scribe asked him, What commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. What are those rituals that you do without really thinking about them. I mean, we do things, I know people that if they spill a little bit of salt, they pick some up and throw it over their shoulder. I know some other people, I'd never heard this before, they lift up their feet every time they drive past a cemetery. I'm not really sure what that's, I know we used to do something like kiss your fingers and put an X on the ceiling of the car or something. I don't know, we have these strange rituals. For whatever reason we do them, even though we know they're probably not doing us any good to do them. Well, there's an old story that might be familiar to you about the woman who, whenever she put her roast in the oven, she cut off the ends of the roast and put it in the pan. And one day her husband said, why do you do that? And she said, I don't know, my mother always did it. So she went and she asked her mother. And her mother said, well, I don't know, my mother did it. Well, she went to her grandmother, her mother's mother, and asked her, why do you cut the ends off your roast? And she said, well, I only had a pan this long. <laughs> there are probably lots of things that we do like that. We do them without even realizing that we're doing them when there's really no good reason to do them. They're just rituals. They're things that we do that are ingrained in us, and it's just the way we do it. At the time when Jesus lived within Judaism, there was a lot of that. It's just the way we do it. There were laws upon laws explaining how things should be done, and not just religious things, but everything, everything. The Torah and the law had so many layers to it because all this interpretation of what it meant had built up. It had built up to the point that people even offered one-tenth of the herbs that they grew, these teeny tiny, I mean herbs, and one-tenth of them they would bring as an offering. Um, there was a precise distance that you were allowed to walk on the Sabbath. There was a lot of regulation, and so it's not surprising that people would wonder, is all of this really necessary? What is the greatest commandment? That's what the scribe asks. What's the most important of all of the law? What he's really asking, though, is what is the core of your teaching? Because Jesus was considered a teacher, they were asking him, what is it that everything else that you teach is built upon? And so Jesus actually answers with scripture, with Old Testament scripture, the Jewish scriptures. The first thing he says, love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, is from Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. It's called the Shema. I love the way that the translation, the message, um, has this verse. It says, so love the Lord God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. Passion, prayer, intelligence, and energy. Love God with all your being. 
Love in that sense is not some inner psychological state. It's about allegiance to God, obedience to God. It's about the covenant that God made with God's people. And the response from the people is living a faithful life. So the first part of Jesus' answer is the most important. Love God with everything you have. Heart, soul, mind, strength, prayer, intelligence, passion, energy. But the second part is also from the Torah. I think a lot of us think Jesus made that up. But it's from Leviticus 19.18. Love your neighbor as yourself. I think often especially preachers, like to turn this around and talk about it in the sense of a psychological truism, that we, we, we as human beings have to have a healthy love and acceptance of ourselves, whereby then we can truly love someone else. But there is a religious truism in this statement, love your neighbor as yourself. We're to focus on the needs of our neighbor as much as we focus on our own needs. So there are the two commandments, and in them we see the cross. We see love of God and love of neighbor. But there's a twist in this story, because so often when Jesus is in conversation with Pharisees and scribes, with the religious authorities, there is conflict. They are not happy about what he is saying. But here, the scribe agrees with Jesus. He says, you are right. I mean, most of the time, the scribes and the Pharisees want nothing to do with what Jesus is saying. But the scribe goes on to say, following these two commandments, loving God and loving neighbors, is much more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices that were happening right there. Because they were at the temple. You don't know that from where we picked up this story, but Jesus is at the temple talking to this scribe. How radical that was for him to say that. I mean, there they were at that place where all those offerings were being offered. And here was a religious person whose livelihood depended on those kind of sacrifices and people participating in those religious rituals. And he's saying that all of those rituals are not as important as loving God and loving neighbors. That would be like me standing up here and saying, well, you know, celebrating communion isn't nearly as important as making certain that your neighbors aren't hungry. In the book, The Good Book, Peter Gomes talks about how too often we take biblical practice over biblical principle. That we like the letter of the law more than the spirit of the law, that we sometimes forget why we have the rules. There's a story about a priest who was returning to his rectory one dark evening, and he was attacked by a thief who pulled a gun on him and demanded, your money or your life? Well, as the priest reached into his coat pocket, the thief noticed that he had a collar. And he said, oh, I I see you're a priest, never mind, you can go. Well, the priest was relieved and surprised by the robber's courtesy, so he offered the, uh, the robber a candy bar, which he remembered he had in his pocket. And the thief replied, no, thank you, Father, I don't eat candy during Lent. <laughs> Sometimes our rituals become an end in themselves, like cutting off the ends of the roast or giving something up for Lent. That's not what we're meant to be doing. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Those two commandments take precedence over everything else. Law can lose its heart. Ritual can lose its reason. And a relationship can lose its love. We are not called to be hung up on finding the right answer or the truth, to be so caught up in that that we miss caring for the people around us, loving our neighbors and loving God. The kingdom of God is not about agreeing on the right answers. 
It's about living, doing, and relating, which the love of our God and the love of neighbors inspires us, informs us, and disciplines us. Loving God and loving our neighbor is at the core of our discipleship. They're the beginning of our faith and the end of it. If we're going to give our faith more than lip service, more than just talking about it, we start with loving God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we'll start with loving our neighbors as ourselves. Today's sermon is the first this month that we'll be talking about the mission, which if you looked on the front of the bulletin, it says the mission of Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church is to be a loving, inviting, praying, and serving congregation in order to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We're called to give more than lip service to our faith, to be loving, inviting, praying, and to offer our service. So today has been about loving. We'll talk some more about inviting, praying, and service in the weeks to come. That, that whole uh, piece came out of the discussion at our uh, church council retreat back in the winter. We talked about what it might look for each of us, for every member of the church, to truly take to heart what that means, to be loving, inviting, to pray for others, to offer service for others. Is there someone that you know that needs a reminder that God loves them and that you love them? Is there someone who you can invite to church? Is there someone who you know needs prayers lifted? Is there someone who could benefit from some act of kindness or service that you could offer? If we're to follow Christ, we must love God and love others. There was a little boy who said, if we want to learn well, if we want to learn to love better, we should start by trying to love our enemies. If you think of yourself as a loving person who already has a lot of people that you offer love to, perhaps it might be starting with someone who you find it difficult to love that would help you to learn to love more deeply and better. God desires our obedience, but we live it out by loving God and by loving others. There's a story that was told by the famous evangelist Dwight L. Moody. One Sunday, a lady was inviting children to come to Sunday school when she met a boy and asked him why he went so far across town to his Sunday school. He walked past other Sunday schools to get to his own. She said, there are plenty of others just as good, and he said, they may be so good, but they are not so good for me. And she said, why not? He said, because they love a fellow, they love a fellow over there. He found love and acceptance at the place where he went. Moody concluded by saying how easy it is to reach people through love. Those who are successful in showing men love will be successful in winning them to Christ. The beginning of our faith is love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do these two things, and you will not be far from the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know you are the creator and giver of life and love, the one who loved us into being, the one who loves us as no one else can. Help us to return that love with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. With all that we have, might we love you, and might that love be lived out in all that we do as we reach out to our neighbors with your love, might they truly know that that love comes from you. Might they know themselves loved in the way that only you can offer love. Lord, you know the things that hold us back, the ways in which we place ourselves before others or before you. Help us to see those things ourselves, to recognize the ways in which we turn away from loving others. 
the ways in which we turn away from loving you. Show us how we can walk more faithfully, how we can open our hearts more fully. Lord, you know there are many who are in need of your love. Help us to recognize those around us who most need to know your love and help us to offer it. Lord, we lift before you all those who are hurting today, for those who are in need of healing in body and mind and spirit. Might they know your touch, might they know your spirit strengthening them in every way, restoring them to wholeness. And Lord, we lift before you all those who grieve this day. Might they be comforted in their loss. Might they know your loving arms wrapped around them. And might you show us ways that we can reach out and offer your comfort as well. Lord, you know the things that we carry in our hearts, the things that are, are kept there secretly. Help us to offer those things to you, that you might be at work in our hearts and lives, drawing us ever closer, that we might truly be made perfect in love. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Gracious God, in gratitude for all that you have given to us, for your great love for us, we offer ourselves and our gifts for your service in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to remain standing as we sing freely, freely. Thank you. 
in my name and because you believe, others will know that I live. I want to give you a challenge for this month and maybe for the rest of the year. I want you to think of one person, one person that you can love, that you can invite to church or to other things, that you can invite into a relationship with a deeper relationship, someone that you can pray for and someone that you can offer your service to. Choose one person and continue to do that from now through the month and maybe through the end of the year and we'll see where God leads us all. May you go forth and because you believe others can know God's love, go and love in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.